Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a train legs with me video. We're going to go into the exercises I'm doing, the order in which I'm doing them, the sets, the reps, all that good stuff. But if you saw my last video, you will have remembered that I've been using Magic Mind. Magic Mind is a productivity shot. I've been taking it for about I think seven-ish days now, maybe a little bit more. Um, and it's formulated with matcha, adaptogens, nootropics, agave, um, just a bunch of great stuff to help you be more productive, be more energized, not taste gross and disgusting like an energy shot, um, and really keep you going without the crash that you get from most energy drinks. Since I've started taking Magic Mind, I've noticed a huge uptick in my productivity and I'm not crashing as much during the day and I have way less midday brain fog. It's also super easy to incorporate into my morning routine. I take it as a shot, nice and quick, um, and I incorporate it with my water and my morning vitamins. So if you want to give this a try, you can use the code in my description box for 20% off. So before we jump into the workout, just a little background information. So my main goals are strength and hypertrophy, and my split is two leg days, a push day, and a pull day. Um, I do a quad and glute focused leg day and a hamstring and glute focused leg day. One of my hypertrophy goals is to grow my legs and my glutes. So I actually train my glutes about three times a week because they get trained on my quad focus leg day, which we're gonna see and go over in this video, on my hamstring and glute focus leg day. And then they also get incorporated on my back day because, or my pull day, I should say, because I do conventional deadlifts um, and a few other like back extension movements, a lot of hinging movements that also train my glutes. So overall, in the goal to train my glutes, um, which is a hypertrophy goal, I do three days, so I'm getting that volume to hit my glutes. Um, I do have some other goals, but they're more strength-based, so that's why my split is the way that it is. I also forgot to mention that I do a fifth day of cardio, so it's five days overall with two rest days. Um, and all of this is meant to be educational. It's supposed to give you some insights into why I make certain choices about my split, but this is not meant to be like hey copy this exactly and you'll look like me because that's not the case um, my goals are unique to me as are yours so really just take this as information to apply to your own split and your own goals because it's not cookie cutter and one thing doesn't work for everybody but all that being said I hope you get something from this and let's jump into it all right, so we're starting off with some barbell back squats. Um, we're starting off with just the barbell for a warm-up set, just to sort of see how they feel. This is really where I'm checking in with how everything feels. And first thing I notice is that I'm having some butt wink. If you look at my hips, you can see that my butt is kind of tucking under and my low back is rounding. I automatically felt this and knew that I needed to do some correction work. So I finished the warm up set, um, but I knew what I was going to work on by the end of this set. So I did a little pause here and you can see that my butt wink is kind of stopping. So I didn't record what I did, um, but I did some front squat work. Everybody's butt wink is different, but for me, really um, focusing on engaging my TA, so my transverse abdominis, really helps stabilize my hips. And you can see that my bunk butt wink is gone. So I've added some weight here and I'm pausing at the bottom really just to solidify, excuse me, that um, hip stability. So this whole time, I'm really thinking about engaging my core and working on not letting my hips tuck under. So like I said, this is different for everybody and what works for everybody is different. So I just know what I need to do personally to correct that. Uh, but it could be more complicated for somebody else. So if you notice that you have some butt wink, I would definitely look into it and let me know if you guys would like to see a video going into more detail. But here I am going into, I think my third set, and I'm now at 2, 215, I think. I have to do some math. 95. Did I say 215? Oh my god, I'm crazy. This is 115. And I'm taking them slow really focusing on the bottom portion, keeping my core engaged. 
So I didn't film it, but I do one more set of 115 um, after this. So I do a total of four working sets. That's not including any sort of warm up squats or anything else that I did for that movement. But next, I'm moving on to a deficit reverse lunge. So I have tens on the bar, so I'm moving 65 pounds. And I have this step here so that I can bring my knee lower than my foot. That's what makes it a deficit. So when you're doing this reverse lunge, if you notice that your knee is going just about the same level as your foot, then it's not a deficit, it's just a reverse lunge. But if your knee is going lower than your foot, which is what we're going for here, then it is a deficit lunge. Here I'm just warming up my hips a little bit. Sometimes I find that my hip flexors get a little tight after doing squats. So I just do that really quickly before going into my deficit reverse lunge. So here you can see that my knee goes lower than my foot. And that's what we're looking for in these. I'm gonna do um, 10 sets per leg. And I usually take a little breather in between because it's pretty intense and I normally can't just go back to back without resting. So for the squats before this, um, I usually do maybe a set of six to eight. I'm not pushing to failure just because um, of my previous hip issue. I really try to maintain good form, whereas if you're truly going to failure, your form's going to break down a little bit. These, though, I really try to set a goal of 10 because that's what feels like pretty close to failure. Um, so on the first set, I normally get to 10. By the third set, I'm probably only going to get to eight or nine. One of the reasons that I really like this exercise is that it's a single leg movement, which are really important to include in your workouts um, just for any sort of imbalances. Um, and it's also a great movement because it increases, um, well, there's a huge range of motion happening at the hips, which increases the time under tension, which is super important for hypertrophy, which is what I'm going for. I'm basically trying to grow my quads, my hamstrings, my glutes, um, which are all working here. Okay, so I'm finishing up. You can see that I'm kind of slowing down, maybe getting a little lazy with that knee, um, but I take a significant rest in between. Um, I think I take definitely at least two minutes of rest and I have a little timer. So if you're really struggling and your goals are hypertrophy, like don't skip your rest periods, make sure you're taking them. I also changed my shirt. I was getting, I didn't bring enough clothes. Um, I have to train clients after I film this and um, I didn't want that shirt to get too sweaty because I have to wear it. <laughs> so that's that. Here I am doing my second set. Again, focusing on that knee coming below the foot. I'm also trying, there are a few times when my knee touches the ground, but I'm trying to like stop right above the ground because you don't want to slam your knee into the ground, obviously. Um, but there are a few times where it taps and that's okay. So for this exercise, I'm only doing three sets of 10. Um, for some of the other exercises, I'm doing more sets at um, lower reps. For hypertrophy, um, the research shows that overall volume is what's important to grow muscle. This is a quote from a study that I'll um, link in the description box, but it said that for optimal hypertrophy, clients should train at 40 to 80% of their one rep max using loads greater than 60% of strength. Um, it is also summarized research indicating to rest over two minutes between sets and consume a diet that contains at least 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So, you, I think there's a lot of talk about like going to failure and doing really like low reps and like that's fine as long as you're getting enough volume. So if you're doing low reps, you have to be doing a higher amount of sets in order to meet that overall volume for you to see the results of that hypertrophy. So if you're doing um, 10 reps, you can do less sets, which is what I'm doing here. But at the same time, if you're doing a higher amount of reps, but you're not training at 40 to 80% of one rep max or using um, loads greater than 60% of your overall strength, that's when you can see a diminish in your results. So basically, you have to find that sweet spot of where you're pushing yourself, but you're not like going crazy overboard and risking overtraining. Now, that is really hard to do. Um, it's not just going to like overnight happen um you have to be pushing yourself really really hard to be overtraining but at the same time if you're not pushing yourself hard enough then you won't see results so you have to find a balance you could also 
um, actually find out what your one rep max is through various tests. But here I am moving on to my hip thrust. So this is an exercise that I do um, higher weight. So I do lower reps for more sets. I think I do four sets of this one. And if my math is correct, which it isn't always, um, this should be 205. Yeah, we've got 45, 85, yeah, this is 205. So I think I do my first two sets at 205, and then I go up to 225 for my last two sets. Um, and like I said, I'm taking at least two minutes of rest in between. Um, I have a timer so that I'm not like dilly-dallying too much because it's very easy to sort of get bored in between the two minutes and go on Instagram and get distracted. So I set a timer so that I'm not taking too much rest um, and that I'm not taking too little. So this is set number two, pretty much all the same stuff. So I think I didn't record one and this is my last set. And so now I'm finishing with 225. So now we're moving on to leg extension. Since this is a quad focused day, I like to do a quad focused movement or an isolation. Um, so for this one, I think I'm doing one, I'm either doing 115 or 120. And I try to get to 10 for this one. So I usually only do three or four sets. I might do four sets on this day. It really depends on how I'm feeling. I only filmed one set of this because it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm just sitting down. So after I did that, then I'm moving on to cable glute kickbacks. So these are fun. I feel like everybody has a different opinion on how to do them. Um, this is how I like to do them. This is how I feel them the most in my glutes. So I set the cable machine not all the way to the bottom. It's a little higher up. So And I step back enough that I can kind of kick forward to initiate the movement. I'm also staying upright like I want to be upright so there's greater glute contraction at the very end of the movement um, if you bend over too much you'll feel that there's way less contraction so I'm staying pretty upright it's a smaller movement I'm also doing a drop set so I'm starting at a weight that feels challenging but not super challenging it's probably closer to 40 percent of my one rep max not 80 percent and I'm doing um about 10 maybe a bit more if i feel like i can keep going and then i'm immediately lowering the weight and going right back into it without any rest um, drop sets are really helpful for getting that overall volume and really fatiguing a muscle you are just going and burning out that muscle group until it can't go anymore so after that i go to the other side and i do the same thing Here's another angle, but yeah, I'm doing the same exact thing here and I'm doing three sets, so three drop sets of this. So overall for my workout, I did barbell back squats for about five or six sets if you include the warm up, And then I did hip thrusts for another four or five. And then I did two isolations of quads and glutes. So overall, I am doing four sorry, 10 sets for my quads. Um, 10 to 20 is considered a good range. Anything over 20 is when you start to risk overtraining and diminishing your results. And then for glutes, I've only really done about eight sets. Um, but like I said, I have a whole second day where I probably do another eight sets on my hamstring and glutes focus day, um, bringing my total up to 16. And then there's also crossover on my pull day where I do conventional deadlifts for another four, which brings me to about 20 sets of exercises that work my glutes, getting to that top range of my volume. Thanks again for watching. I hope this was helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions about anything in the description box. I also should mention that this workout maybe took me an hour and 15 minutes. So it's not the best if you're like in a rush. Um, and I also did a warm up that's specific to me that is not included. So that's how I got to an hour and 15. So yes, 
Um, let me know if you have any questions about it or if you want me to go into any more detail about anything. And don't forget if you want to try Magic Mind to use the link in my description box for 20% off. Bye.